Alright everyone, um, welcome to my video. I decided to make this video because I have been looking all over the internet for information about the unique vintage knitting machine. Um, it's actually just called Unique Knitting Machine. And this is what it looks like. This is the nameplate on it. It says Unique. It's a green knitting machine. Um, I believe it's from the 1950s. Might be slightly older, but uh, from the research that I've done, um, I believe 1957 was a patent date that someone had mentioned online. Let me give you a look at the machine. It is 160 needles, 4.5 millimeter spacing, so it's a standard gauge machine. Machine, bleh, excuse me. Okay, it does not have a ribber. It just knits, stocking net. This right here is the carriage. Okay, and that carriage has Bakelite knobs. And here, on either end, you have some levers. This is the other one. Now, the way this machine operates is it does not have needles that move independently. The entire row of needles moves all at once. You activate these levers on the end. So as you can see here, I am moving the lever and the entire row of needles, the whole needle bed will expand and retract. And I've got a garter bar hanging on there. So please ignore that and I'll take that off. Okay, so retracts, expands. Okay, that's the needle bit. Now when you run the carriage across the machine, what you'll see is that the carriage causes these fingers or these arms or kind of like gate pegs to travel along. They're pushers actually. So what they do is when you've got yarn on the machine and the yarn is going through the latches the needle latches and you've got your row of knitting behind those needle latches these little pushers will actually push the stitches that are on the machine over the needles let me put those needles back so push it over the, need the needles and create a stitch and I'm actually going to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about in a moment. But I just want to give you a general overview of the machine. Okay, so I am back. And what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and set up for knitting on this machine. This is, once again, the unique knitting machine. It's a vintage knitting machine. And it operates a lot like the uh, Impasol Mini. Um, what I did was I knit up just some scrap fabric and I use it to cast on on this machine. So basically I just put a first row of the stitches from the edge of the fabric on the machine and I push them behind the latches. It's really important that the fabric be completely behind all the latches as you can see there. Uh, and I'm going to try to show you this by using one hand because I'm holding the camera. But the beauty of this machine is that instead of having to push the fabric back by hand and then close the latches, um, all I need to do really is make sure that the yarn that I'm laying in the latches, this is the brown yarn here that I'm going to be knitting with, that needs to be within the latches, the fabric needs to be behind the latches, I'm sorry, the yarn, the brown yarn needs to be in the hooks. The fabric needs to be behind the latches. Let me fix that. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Let's see. There's no stitch on that needle. Okay, right there. Open that latch, put the yarn in. Okay. So it looks like everything is good. I have my yarn inside the hooks. 
and here's where the magic happens. So um, if I can try and pull down on this knitting, once I pull down on the knitting, I'm going to hold it between my knees. <laughs> okay, so I'm pulling down on the knitting and I'm going to use this lever here to push the needles back. You can see those needles going back. The needles are going back and when they go back, voila, the latches will close. See that? Latches have closed around that brown yarn. See? Yarn is within those latches and the hooks and they are closed. So now all I need to do is take my carriage. This is the carriage. It's made into the machine. And I'm going to pass it over the stitches. And basically it knit off. So you can see everywhere where there was yarn in the in the latches it knit off let me just double check yep so it knit off everywhere okay i'm going to do another row so that you can see the first thing i'm going to do is because i have the end of my yarn is on the wrong side i'm going to put these needles back out using that lever i'm just going to pass this back to the other side so this is kind of like hold position right here with this out because um, the little fingers on the carriage can't reach past the needles in order to push the stitch over the edge. So I can just do a free pass there without knitting anything. Okay. So let me show you how I, um, I use the stick to push the fabric back. I'm going to put those needles back in position there. I'm going to get the stick that I normally use and that is just a wood uh, stick that I use from an old loom. I'm going to try and hold the camera and do this with one hand. <laughs> okay so I take the stick and I put it right up underneath the needle bed. Hang on one second. I'm going to have to prop my camera or my phone on something. I'll be right back. All right, so I have my stick up underneath those needles um, because what I want to do is basically have these stitches that are in the hooks pushed back by this wood. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold this wood here and then I'm going to push the needles out with the lever. One moment. See if I can hold my phone under my chin. <laughs> Hopefully it's in frame. Okay, so I hope you got that. I just pushed it back. Now the first row of stitches is going to be really tight, but after that it loosens up. So now that that is done, I'm just going to take the yarn again. And I'm going to put it over the needles that are being worked. That to go above everything. And up until the last stitch. Which would be this one. Oops. This would be this one right here. Hard to do with one hand. Okay, so that's done. And I don't need to put any tension on the yarn itself. Um, but I do need to push the needles back just a little bit to make sure that this yarn is in the latches. And it's really easier a lot easier than this but it's just so hard to film this with one hand okay so there we go it's in the latches there we go and I'm going to push the needles back and you can see how all of those latches just closed around the yarn 
just like that. I didn't have to pull fabric forward. All I had to do was push that uh, lever back and all of the latches closed up. So now I simply knit across. And you can watch those little pushers push the stitches right off and over. Boom. Pushed. And I think I was stepping on the yarn, so that's what made it a little tight. <laughs> but uh, basically, that's it. That's the way that works. So let me do it again. All right, so this time, putting the stick underneath. Try and do that with one hand. Put the stick right, oops, right up underneath. And then the lever, once I turn that, it's going to push it out. Give me one second, I'll do that. All right, so I'm back again, and I have used my stick to hold the fabric while I pushed all of these needles forward. Okay, so it's just a matter of pushing this up under there, holding the fabric back, and then using this lever here on the end, you move that up and down, the needles come forward or they uh, go back. So that's done. I don't need to stick right now. I'll put this over here. Now all I need to do is put the yarn in the hooks. Okay, so only where I've been knitting, only those needles, all the way over until the end, and they have to go in front of the lashes, not behind the lashes. So here we go. Oh, stitch here. Okay, and then here I'm just gonna push those needles back just a little bit so that the yarn stays in the lashes. Right there, the yarn is in the lashes. Good, good. Pull those needles back, and we're going to watch those latches close up over that yarn. So again, we're just going to check everything and make sure that everything is in the latches like it's supposed to be. All my latches are coiled around that yarn that I'm knitting with. So here's that yarn. Latches are closed, and now I'm going to knit from left to right. Going to push. Oops. Kind of hard to do one hand. Pushes it across. And there's my knitting. You can see it is knitting. Okay, and again, the way it knits is it just pushes everything across the needle, these little fingers. Okay, so we're gonna pull the lever right here. We're gonna turn that lever, and as we turn that lever, we're gonna watch these needles come back out. There are the needles, okay? There's the fabric. You can push it back there by hand, or you can get one stick, hold it up underneath, and then when you pull that lever out and the needles come out, it automatically pushes the fabric back. Um, but it's hard for me to do it one hand, so I'm doing it like this. Again, I'm going to get that last needle. Uh, I like to bring the needles back just a little bit. Last needle, we're going to go across all the way to the end of the row of stitches. So the last stitch was here. Hard to do with one hand. And that's it. Last row of stitches was there. Okay. Again, push those needles back. Watch the latches close up over that yarn. Okay. I like to just take a look, make sure everything is inside, inside the latches. There they are. Everything's inside the lashes. So we're going to knit across. Oops. There we go. Knitted across. 
Okay. It seems kind of like a tedious process. It really is not that bad. It's a lot faster than knitting by hand. Um, the only thing is because I'm holding this camera with one hand and trying to do the knitting with one hand, it seems like it's a lot, but it really isn't. It really is not bad at all. Um, the downside, this is slower than if you just had a brother or studio, you know, more modern type machine without these fingers. Um, also, because the needles don't work independently, it's very difficult to do hand manipulated stitches. Um, you can do some tuck and then relace up, you know, drop stitches and lace it back up, I believe, but I don't see myself doing much other than intarsia perhaps on here because you can't do multiple colors. And if you have more than one ball of yarn, you can do two separate projects, you know, on here at a time. Um, so there again, I have the lashes closed and yarn is caught up in there as I knit from left to right. Okay, much easier that time because it starts to loosen up once you get back the you know second or third row of stitches. Okay, so now I'm going to pull the needles back out, push the fabric back by hand behind the lashes, and do it again. Just go ahead and wrap that yarn around. Last stitch and work. I think I got it. Yep. And of course, as I mentioned, I like to have my needles go back just a little bit so I can make sure that I keep the work or the working yarn in the hooks. Okay, everything looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and let those needles go back. Everything closes up around that working yarn, and I need a cross. Okay, pull everything back out, push the fabric back behind the latches, all stitches behind the latches. Okay, now that everything is behind the latches, I'm just going to go ahead and bring those. Needles back just a little. Get my working yarn. I'm working from left to right now. I'm going to go ahead and get, grab that first stitch, put it across the needles until that last stitch. Alright, it's all in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and move those needles back. Latches are going to close around the working yarn. Sorry if I keep getting out of frame. It's kind of hard to look at the knitting and look at the camera at the same time. So now I'm going to knit left to right. And it, let me just stop here. So you see how these fingers come out, these pushers come out and push the stitches over the latches and create the next stitch. They pushed the stitches that were behind the latches over the yarn that's inside the hooks and that creates a stitch. Let me go really slow here so you can see. It's pushing those needle, those stitches from the back out and over the hooks of the needle. And how uh, the size of the stitch is determined by how far these pushers come out. And I can control how far these pushers come out by this thing here. So it's really tiny, hard to see, but there, this is numbered. Um, it says one to eight, but there's two extra slots here. So it actually goes up to 10. Okay. And when I turn these knobs, it allows me to move this up or down so I can make the stitches smaller, which means these fingers don't come out very much. Maybe they come out to about here. Or I can move this lever down and make the stitches bigger 
which means these needles, these uh, pushers are going to come out well past where those needles are right now, well past where they are right now, and I can make big stitches. Okay, so that's how you control the size. Also, in this machine, um, it has these little markers all across the bed, and they slide. So you can set up little markers. I guess if you want to do some type of patterning, um, you can set up little markers there so you know uh, where you are in the pattern. And then, probably really hard to see, let me pull these needles out. Oops, I gotta finish knitting that off. All across, knit that off. Okay. So let me let the needles out. I want you to see how the needles are set up. Pushing the fabric back behind the latches. Okay, now again, I don't have to do this by hand. I can use a stick or a ruler and I can put this here and then when I push these, pull these needles out of work, it will automatically push the fabric back. But I can't do it with one hand while I'm filming, so. Alright, so anyway, um, back to the needles. These needles have, um, every 10 needles, there is a copper needle. I don't know if you can see it. Copper needle here, copper, one, copper needle here, 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 and all the way down every 10 stitches. You can probably see it from further away. Every 10 stitches. So because there are no numbers here on the bed, you can count these copper needles and tell where you are. So I know it's um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160 needles on that bed. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to do this one more time. One more row of stitches. Push the fabric back. I'm going to bring those needles in, in just a little bit. Get the first stitch set up. Go all the way down to that last stitch. Okay, got it all on the needles within the hook or within the hooks and now I push these needles back the latches close around it and end it back that's it that is how you knit so you have to have something to start it cast on rag um, or something to get started. You have to have stitches on needles in order to knit. Um, just by design with this machine. Um, and that's basically it. I'm glad I figured this out. With the help of the uh, Impasol uh, videos that I saw online. Um, on YouTube. Um, thank you so much, Berta, for your video. That really helped me with the uh, these fingers here. Um, that I was so unsure about. So, if you have a machine that uses these fingers, this is basically going to be what you're looking at in terms of how to knit it. You're going to have to have your stitches behind the latch. All the way behind the latch, you're going to have to put yarn in the hooks. And was it some machine, most machines, um, the needles stay put. They don't move like this machine. They don't have levers where these needles go in and out. So what you do in that case is you push your fabric back. You put your yarn in the hooks and then you pull the fabric forward and it closes the latches as you can see. So you pull it forward and then you knit off. But with this machine, you don't have to do that because once you put the yarn in the latches, you can just go ahead and use this lever and will automatically close those latches for you, which is pretty cool. Um, that is about it. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Um, this particular machine, for some reason, the machine has a base that separates. So the base can stay there and I can actually pick up the entire machine. Okay, I've got one little clamp holding that base down, but it lifts up. Now, I did notice that the machine can be used um, horizontally or 
well not horizontally but you you can use it this way or you can actually turn it and have the needles straight up and down you know so instead of the needles being horizontal the needles can be vertical and you can still use this machine um, and the way I can tell that is because on this little lever here or not level the circular part here there's some holes on the underside that attach to a little like a a knob that fits in the holes and there are two of them one fits in when the machine is laying with the needles horizontal and then there's another opening that that little knob fits into when the machine is with the needles straight up and down so um, I guess I'll try knitting that way some other time but hopefully this video helped you if you do have this machine or any other machine that uses these little fingers these little pushers this is how you knit on it you always have to start on with uh, start off rather with stitches on the machine the best thing to do is use just a cast on rag um, that's what worked for me and uh, hopefully that works for you thanks so much for watching bye bye now